Welcome to the Leadership Decoded Podcast, where we discuss leadership strategies and techniques that can improve your ability to lead at work and in your everyday life. I'm your host, Dr. Will Ramey, a former U.S. Army officer and current executive education adjunct professor, team development workshop facilitator, and leadership coach to Fortune 100 companies. In this episode, we break down trust, the benefits, and provide tips on how to build trust within your team. Who we choose to trust, under what circumstances, and accept our choice based on good reasons. This matters as a leader. Let's dive in. There are two types of trust, cognition-based trust and effective-based trust. As a leader, it's important for you to know the difference. Cognition-based trust is trust that's based on the knowledge of a person's competence, reliability, and dependability. Effective-based trust is trust based on the emotional bonds between people, genuine care and concern for the person, the intrinsic value of the relationship. Cognition-based trust is necessary for effective-based trust to form over time, which has more impact on important outcomes. As a leader, understanding both types of trust will allow you to build stronger connections with your team over time. So let's take a look at the benefits of both types of trust. Both types of trust enable people to take risks. When you feel psychologically safe within a team, you feel comfortable making mistakes, learning, asking questions, being curious, being innovative. What is it costing you when team members don't feel that they can vocalize creative ideas, try new ways of working, or do things differently in an effort to explore something new because they don't feel they have your trust? Trust also has impact on the decisions we make. Who we allow to influence us? Who is involved in the process? What will this person think? The decisions we make are influenced by facts and feelings. The reciprocal cycle of trust plays a key part in this. We think about effective-based trust. How does it feel when you get advice from somebody? When you get insight from somebody? Who do you let influence you? How do you build connections with your team members so you can influence them? Trust also affects how we feel. Think about times at work where you've thought to yourself, I don't know about that. I've been burnt by that person before. This indirect effect of being second guessed, micromanaged, or retaining control of everything is a result of the lack of extending trust or a feeling as if you are not being trusted. The results are typically never positive. You hold higher levels of stress, self-doubt, negative self-talk can start to form when you don't feel trusted by your team or by your boss. When you are trusted and you give your trust to someone and it goes well, the feeling of cohesion within the team and the effectiveness of the team have been found to increase. And trust increases your willingness to share information, which also indirectly increases team effectiveness by increasing openness and accuracy of information and knowledge being shared. Think about that. Would I trust you with that piece of information? Can I tell this person that? Does my team trust me? Why aren't they bringing problems to me anymore? That's a great question for you to ask as a leader. The key is trust. Leading people encompasses both the feeling and doing of work. Building trust requires you to acknowledge and recognize emotions in the members of your team and establishing a climate of mental well-being. So how can you build trust within your team? A few ways. Start by building connections with your team members. Genuine conversations about work and socialization, families, interests, hobbies, being able to recall that information. When you close your work week out on a Friday and you ask people, what do you have planned this weekend? What do you have going on? And then being able to recall that on Monday and asking them, how was your anniversary? How was that movie? Did you get out to that water park? That goes such a long way with you and your team members in building a connection. That feeling of, I was heard. That person actually remembered what was going on. And that translates to work. When you talk about resourcing and problems and communicating, Communication is communication. How you can build trust also? By establishing a common ground. Be wary of being the one-upper. When you hold a leadership position, that position on the organizational chart means something. It's difficult, especially for new leaders or emerging leaders and even senior leaders, to take time 
to want to connect with your team by sharing similar stories. But don't be the one-upper. Ensure that your team members always remain the heroes of the exchange. Building trust comes down to mutually supportive relationships as well, and we all have a role to play on a team. No one person more or less important than the other. To be able to extend trust and receive trust means that you have role clarity. You are not leveraging your positional authority. You're able to reach out and work together and acknowledge outwardly that everybody has a role to play. Everybody is contributing to the success and the outcomes of our team. And knowledge sharing. Understanding that knowledge sharing in a team is not automatic. Being able to foster practices that help you exchange knowledge, share information with people, have people share information with you, giving them access to the information they need, whether that be posting data publicly or creating a communication board or communication wall. For example, by offering new ideas and challenging technical solutions and stimulating new approaches to work, leaders can instigate team discussions and reviews which lead to team knowledge sharing, setting the example and signaling that the open sharing of ideas and information is important and valuable for the team. Communication exchange becomes the process. It becomes the norm and people can trust that they have the most accurate information to move forward with and sharing leadership, inviting team members to give background briefings, presentations at crucial team meetings, rotating the role of who facilitates conversations, delegating different leadership responsibilities to different members of your team so they all have a part in being able to influence one another will help build trust. Building trust can be distilled down to consistent, predictable behaviors that enrich mutual support, participative decision-making, and empowering your team members. Now, being able to enter a team as a leader is a difficult moment. As we talked about earlier, team composition Transition changes the level of trust. I've transitioned into a dozen different teams throughout my career. And as a team leader, I've taken a very similar approach to each time that I've adapted into a team, each time that I've joined a new team. And this approach has worked wonders. I start out by having one-on-one conversations with my team members, get to know you conversations. I typically don't bring up work. I typically bring up who people are. How does it feel to be here on this team? How are you motivated to come into work each and every day? I don't talk about performance. I don't talk about key performance indicators. I don't talk about any of that. What I stick to is who you are as a person. And I give that person an opportunity to hear my story, but I ask permission. Is it okay if I share a little bit about who I am? 90% of the time they want to hear, occasionally you get that person that could care less. And that's okay because you're starting to find out what footing you're on. You're starting to extend that trust by being open and being vulnerable. The competencies I have are on my wall. My degree hangs, my medals that I was awarded in the army. Who I am is different than what I've accomplished. What I accomplished will start off setting the tone for cognition-based trust. Who I am will establish over time if people feel they can trust me. So by going in, having one-on-one conversations is a great start. The second thing I do is meet people where they are. I allow them and give them opportunity to teach me more about what it is that you do. What roadblocks are you having? Who do you contact? Who do you connect with inside and outside of our team? I use this information to my advantage to be able to leverage connections with my peers. I understand my team members' perspective, roadblocks, and then I go out and help find them solutions to make their job easier. Then I hold regular and recurring meetings with my team members, my check-ins with them. How you doing? How you feeling? What's going on in your life? What's going on at work? It's easy to say that we can flip a switch and separate who we are and what's happening outside of of work in your home life and and don't take it in, in with you to work. But that's not part of the human experience. The feeling and doing of work. Recognizing weddings, milestones, anniversaries, funerals, mandatory. Take time to reach out, make those phone calls and check on your team when things aren't going well. And when things are going well, make sure you, you, you acknowledge that as well. Knowing what's happening in their life ties that bond to you here at work. Understanding how they feel when they show up at work impacts that team's performance. And that is cyclical over time. I have found this is what works for me 
as a team leader, understanding my people, being able to call them by name, knowing something about them personally, being involved with them just enough to understand their job at work without micromanaging and giving them the space to voice their concerns and opinions, share their thoughts and feelings, participate in decision making leads to bonds of trust that move past the cognition and into the affective over time. It gets past the what I've done and we move to who we are. And that's what sets us apart as teams. As a leader, to gain trust, you have to show up competent and with high moral character. To extend trust and receive trust, you must be conscious of your behaviors. To leverage the strength of trust within your team members, you should set the conditions where team members are empowered, support each other, and feel included. If you've enjoyed today's episode, be sure to subscribe to the Leadership Decoded podcast and share it with your fellow leaders. We value your feedback, so please leave a review, drop a comment, let us know what topics you'd like us to explore next. Stay curious, stay connected, and keep empowering your teams to reach new heights. See you in the next episode. Thanks for joining me today on the Leadership Decoded podcast. To explore more of what's happening on the stacks, head over to youtube.com slash on the stacks. If you want to keep the conversation going, connect with me on LinkedIn. If you're interested in learning more about leadership and team development workshops for your organization, don't hesitate to reach out. I'd love to have a conversation to find out how I can help serve you. I'm your host, Dr. Will Ramey. Be well, my friends.